Here's a question for you. The near microscopic water flea has 31,000 genes. The wheat plant has about 108,000 genes. The rice plant has about 67,000 genes. So my question to you is, how many genes do us humans have? Go ahead, give a guess. The answer to this question is, it takes only between 20 to 25,000 genes. Now that's kind of strange, isn't it? Water flea is a very small organism and it needs more genes than us. Even grass needs 32,000 genes, but we humans only need 20 to 25,000 genes? How is that possible? Now, before I embarked on this journey of finding the answer, I asked a few people what they think about genes. Many people assume that we humans need only 46 genes. So before we start, let's clear the confusion between DNA, genes, and chromosomes. First, let's start with the biggest of them all, the chromosomes. Almost all cells in us humans have 46 chromosomes, 23 from the mother and 23 from the father. So that makes 23 pairs of chromosomes. Now, each chromosome is made from hundreds of thousands of DNA strands. DNA is made up of four chemical bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. For simplicity, let's call them A, T, G, and C. Now, in the DNA, a T can only combine with an A, and a G can only combine with a C. That's the basic rule. So, we have a long chain of A, T, and G, C pairs. By themselves, they don't do much. But when the right combination of A's, T's, G's, and C's forms a chain, they can be meaningful and be useful to us. For example, you have E, I, L, M, and S at your disposal. Now, if you combine these letters as, let's say, E, L, I, S, M, or I, S, M, E, L, or M, S, E, I, L, it doesn't mean anything. It's just a meaningless jumble of letters. But if you combine them in the right way, they can form meaningful words such as M-I-L-E-S, miles, S-M-I-L-E, smile, or L-I-M-E-S, limes. Similarly, when the A-T and G-C pairs are combined and chained or spelled into a meaningful sequence, they can make proteins, the building blocks of life. And this meaningful sequence of the DNA is called a gene. Spelled right, these base pairs, what are base pairs? AT and GC. So these base pairs encode for the proteins we need to sustain human life. In English, the longest meaningful word with 45 letters is pneumono ultra microscopic silico volcano coniosis, but a gene has a much, much longer spelling or code. In humans, a gene is around 10,000 to 15,000 base pairs. That's a pretty long code or spelling. Just imagine how tough that spelling bee would be. So basically, human DNA has about 3 billion base pairs of AT and GC, which reside in the 23 pairs of chromosomes within the nucleus of almost all our cells. Out of these 3 billion, only about 24 to 30 million base pairs, that is only 1% of our total DNA, make between 20 to 25,000 genes. So the question then arises, what is the rest 99% of our DNA doing? So only about 1% of our DNA has genes that code for proteins. These useful parts of a gene are called exons. A gene can have many exons in it. About 7% of our genes code for other important tasks. So in total, that adds up to 8% of our genome. The remaining 92% is just there. Many scientists call it the junk part of our DNA, which for the most part it is. One very interesting thing is that about 9% of our DNA is defective viral sequences and fragments. In simple English, about 9% of our DNA is virus DNA. Isn't that crazy? Coming back to our main topic today, scientists had high hopes of finding the answers through the Human Genome Project, or HGP, which was started in October of 1990, and finally sequenced the human genome in July of this year, 2021. But after spending north of $3 billion, 
the fruits of the Human Genome Project have not been as dramatic as scientists had reckoned. In fact, the direct connection of you having a certain gene active in your body and that resulting in some kind of medical condition is very rare. Now, think about it for a second. We sequenced the whole human genome, but still we can't directly relate the absence or presence of a certain disease to a gene. What's missing here? The missing part of the puzzle was answered by the Human Microbiome Project, or in short, HMP. Let's talk in detail about this HMP that broadened our understanding of what human means. Started in 2008 and now in its second stage, the main aim of Human Microbiome Project was to find out what kind of microbes are living in what parts of the human body, in how many numbers, and more importantly, how they affect our body. Now, what's human microbiome? The human microbiome refers to the entire community of microorganisms that live on or in the human body. More specifically, it refers to all of the genes in these microbes, which include bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and viruses, but mainly bacteria. The Human Microbiome Project revealed, on average, each person is host to more than 4,000 species of microbes, around 500 of which are found in your gut alone, with each person having a unique combination of microbes. The findings suggest that it is becoming ever more probable that your microbiome affects your health even more than your DNA. Why? Because your DNA can't change much over your lifetime, but your microbiome can change much more easily and so it can help you improve your health much better than the DNA. So basically the human body is not just human cells but also the cells of these bacteria, fungi, protozoa and viruses that call us humans home. This begs the question, what percentage of human body is human body alone? In other words, what percent of you is you alone? As late as 2015, it was assumed that 10% of our body is composed of human cells and the rest 90% belong to these microbes living in and on our bodies. But advancements in research have settled the current estimates to about 43% of the cells belonging to humans and the rest 57% belonging to our microbes. So we are not just organisms, we are superorganisms, or in other words, superhumans. Frederick Nietzsche would be happy to know that. Jokes apart, the majority of you is not you. And that's in terms of sheer number of cells. Now, when it comes to genes, we are even more outpaced. The human genome is about 20 to 25,000 genes. But according to the research of Brendan Tierney and his colleagues at Harvard Medical School, the DNA analysis of 3,655 human microbiome samples some taken from people's mouths and some from people's guts, revealed that only the mouth microbiome and gut microbiome contains nearly 46 million bacterial genes. So based on that, the team estimated that the total number of genes in the collective human microbiome could be around 232 million. Just think about it for a second. If this research and the resulting estimates are true, it means for every single human gene, there are a thousand genes of microbes in our body. That's incredible. So that leads us to the question, why does the human body host so many other organisms, so many other genes, so many non-human genes? What's the evolutionary benefit to us? And more importantly, how long have these cohabitants been cohabiting in us? The friendship between microbes and more complex life forms is old. To understand how old, let's have a look at the evolutionary history of our planet. And to keep things simple, let's just focus on bacteria because they constitute most of our microbiome anyway. So for that, I want you to extend your arms out just like the Vitruvian man. Now, if you assume the tip of your right hand's middle finger as the formation of Earth around 4.5 billion years ago, then the Earth cooled down around 4 billion years ago. That would be the middle of your forearm. 
then around 3.5 million years ago at your right elbow point the first bacteria evolved it took another 3.2 billion years for complex life forms to evolve and that happened around 580 million years ago and on our vitruvian man it would be the wrist of the left hand modern humans the homo sapiens appear at the top sliver of the nail of the middle finger of the left hand around 300,000 years ago now except red blood cells all cells in your body have mitochondria the powerhouse of the cell mitochondria combine our food molecules and oxygen and convert them into energy in the form of ATP molecules without mitochondria cells can't make ATP and they would start to die but you will be surprised to know that mitochondria are not part of the human DNA mitochondria have their own DNA genome called mitogenome which is substantially similar to bacterial genome but how is that possible well researchers believe that our modern mitochondria have evolved from simple bacteria yes your cells mitochondria the powerhouse of your cells are just an evolved form of bacteria but how is that possible around 1.45 billion years ago in a happy accident a single celled organism gobbled up this simple bacteria it turned out to be a win-win the bacteria got protection and food the host single celled organism got a more effective way of converting food into energy as one host species split into two and evolved and evolved and evolved further the bacteria that it hosted also split evolving separately with their new hosts the mitochondria in your cells are a result of this 1.45 billion year evolution of those primitive bacteria just like the humans are the result of 1.45 billion year evolution of those single celled hosts now why is it a happy accident because for the first time two unrelated microorganisms were living together the bacterium and the host single celled organism and so that paved the way to multicellular life without that happy accident complex life as we know it would not have been possible the mighty mitochondria has become so integral to our cells that we no longer consider these ex bacteria to be the other despite them having their own dna separate from human dna by the time we evolved into animals and then mammals and then primates and then on to hominids and finally to homo sapiens we had trillions of these bacteria and other microbes living in our skin nose mouth gut and many other locations within our body our immune system has evolved to not attack these friendly non-human microbes just like mitochondria with their separate genome help us in converting food and oxygen into energy in almost every cell in our body the 39 trillion microbes in our gut and nose and mouth and other organs help us in carrying out activities that are vital for our existence some great benefits of having a diverse and thriving microbiome in our body are fat loss and weight control prevention of diabetes prevention and control of asthma and other allergies better mind control and vitamin b12 synthesis so we don't need to have a big genome all by ourselves we have simply learned to host these 39 trillion invisible friends our microbes in our body to work for us in a way we have outsourced many vital activities to these other genes not the genes of our human genome but to the genes of our microbiome that's one big reason why just 20 to 25000 protein coding genes are enough for us to run this complex operation called the human body we humans can't live without our trillions of invisible microbe friends so next time you think about you make sure to count these 39 trillion friends as part of you that's our video for today thank you for watching till the end and if you really liked it please like it if you want to subscribe it that would be fantastic and uh, please share it in your groups thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one until then bye bye